guys wouldn't handle it you know now uh two years down the line two years after when i i went to grade i think it was around grade four so my mom uh that was just around around about 2000 and I think it was 2006, if I'm not mistaken. So my mom got a job. Ne? My mom got a job. And she got a job uh, as a teacher. She didn't even qualify to, 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 to become a teacher or to teach whatsoever. It was just luck. You know, it was just luck. So she got a job. However, the job was not paying well. But there was one good thing that I loved about my mom's new job. It was that because where she was teaching, it was a primary school, a, a private primary school. They actually say that if you are a teacher there, you are allowed to bring at least a maximum of two children to study at the school for as long as it's your own children. And therefore, they will not pay school fees, you know. Then my mom told me that uh, she got a job and she's going to be teaching at some school and so forth. And she wants me to move from public school to primary school. And I was super excited. She was worried that I was not going to be happy uh, because, uh, because of the... Agariana, when she sees me, she hears me talking about these friends every day. I'm playing with them. She doesn't know what these friends make me do behind closed doors just because my family is not well respected in the hood or the community whatsoever, you know? So she was actually, she actually thought that I was not going to be happy because of the bond that I have with friends. And then when she told me I was fucking happy, I was happy because now I'm going to move to a private school, new friends. Now, those people at the private school, they don't know my life. They don't know that I used to drink bad water or get naked in front of uh, girls in the class just to get able because I was hungry at that time and all that, you know. So, when I, I, I told the friends in, in, in the primary that my mom got a new job, she's going to be a teacher and I'm going to be moving from the school, you know. And then that's when they actually started treating me much better because it was quite a big deal going from public school to private school at that time the only thing they didn't know was that i didn't pay school fees because my mom was a teacher there you know now i i went to to study to study there and that time uh my father decided that you know what uh, i've been staying with my mom because he was staying with my, with his mom at that time. I, I think it's high time I find my own place. So that's when they actually found a stand. And then in the stand, they actually built a small shack. Just a small shack. So when my mom moved to, to, to the new uh, work, they took me along. So Mara, we moved to a new home. So now I was no longer staying with my grandmother, like from 2006. Uh, middle 2006 i think so i think it was around yeah somewhere there before june though so i moved to to a new home which was i would say fully owned by my mom and dad however that was a shack so that's how i got to 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 start staying in a shack you know now from 2006 now everything is is, is 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 looking to be in place i think I, I was around about 11 years now i've had a problem i've had a problem around about that time uh, i was actually fat ne? i was actually fat around that time and 2007 i fell extremely sick you know, extremely sick, that my mom ended up thinking that maybe they are bewitching me because I moved from uh, public school to private school because obviously they didn't know that I moved there because of favors and so forth, you know. And 
I started becoming sick and people in the hood started talking, you know. Uh, that was the time HIV, you remember HIV and AIDS? That was the time it was starting, at, around that time, you know. So people were saying that I'm sick because I have HIV, you know. And my mom was thinking that maybe they are bewitching me because of that and so forth. And it was very, very difficult, you know. And my grandmother actually said that I, man, the reason why this child is losing weight, I think I have an idea. So my grandmother, that's when my grandmother took me to this other granny. She took me to this other granny. Uh, may her soul rest in peace. She took me to this other granny. And then this other granny found out, Hore, I have a problem, you know, like I have this, I have this hole here, like on my chest, like here, there was this hole, the hole was actually big enough that you can even pour water, like here, you can actually pour water, here. Yeah. so my grandmother took me to this other granny, which she knew, and then this other granny diagnosed me the way she diagnosed me, I don't know, and then they found out I have what we call Sebedi Bedi. It's a Bedi disease. And Sebedi Bedi is not caused by anything specific. It's, it's just uh, one of those natural diseases, you know? It's just one of those natural diseases. It's a long hurry. Yeah, you can't really run away from. So what happens with the disease, the way she explained it, when you eat food, I don't know how it happens, but when you eat food, the disease will eat the food that you ate. After it has done eating the food that you ate, the disease will now eat you. Meaning that if you were chubby, you will start losing weight. You know, you'll start losing weight and so forth. You know, now uh, the granny healed me. She did her rituals. She cut me with razors, put in some powders and all that, you know those traditional petty things and she told me that I will never I will never go back to the same size that I was before meaning that I will actually never be fat again you know and then uh, people in the hood didn't know about that so they were saying that I only ate only ate and so forth. you know people will always talk. I think I should have learned from that moment that people will always talk. Whether you are poor or you are rich, somebody, somebody always has something to say. So they were saying all those things. But at that time, I was staying in, in another place. I was staying in another hood, actually. So what they were saying at the village, because I was staying in a Kasinyana, so a developing Kasi, it didn't really matter because I couldn't hear almost everything. So slowly I was fading away from that lifestyle. You know, things were coming, were becoming all right. Now, uh, that was grade seven. Now, my mom was one of my teachers in grade seven. Uh, she was not uh, that, that good in teaching because she never went to school for it. But... She was one of the best teachers according, according to the principal uh, because she's a hard worker, you know. Uh, she's a hard worker, that woman. So grade 7, I completed my, my, my uh, grade 7 successfully. Now, the weight, remember before I was chubby. So now I was no longer chubby or fat. Now I was just a slender. I was thin. It's just now that I'm starting to have this things here but before now it's it's happiness now you know so uh when i was going to grade eight uh my mom noticed that there's a big difference from the hopoto that i was in primary at the public in the public school and the hopoto that i was after going to a private school you know because now I would know how to speak English, you know. And then when I was finishing my grade 7, going for grade 8, she, she didn't want me to, 
to go to a, what you call to go to a public school because you know how public schools are you know she wanted me to go to a private school but problem was that she didn't afford that was her only worry but you know god has his own ways people so 2008 january when my mom was supposed to go back to that school to teach uh, now she found a better job now a better job doesn't mean that she will have money but it's far much better than what was happening or what she had before so she resigned at the school as a teacher and then she worked for this other new job and then she told me that you see now that i got a new job i can make a plan i can't afford but i can make a plan for you to study a, at a, a, a private school a private secondary school so 2008 i went uh, for my grade 8 at a private school the name of the school it's in practice uh, it's in Tlatula science and commercial college i'm not sure if the school is still there or the principal for that matter so she took me there and then uh, what she did was that she took a loan uh, she took a loan to cover school fees for the whole year therefore she was paying the loan bit by bit during the course of the year so she paid school fees for the whole year so meaning that 2008 i never got to uh, worry about paying school fees you know then i started studying now my grade 8 was quite interesting you know grade 8 uh, which was in 2008 you know it was a new environment and all that you know but there was only one problem in grade 8 uh, in my class i was actually staying you know in grade 8 we used to share tables we used to share tables so in grade 8 i was staying with a bully you you know those guys in in in, in high school not in a bad way ne? but most of those guys who were bullies and bosses in high school now they are the ones who are asking for two rents at the robot robot calling us a uh, say or brother whatsoever i don't know what happened yes but yeah i was staying with a bully now the guy luckily uh, he he liked me meaning that i was his ice boy you know whatever that he wanted whether he would send me and then in return what i get is that nobody would touch me if you touch me in high school grade eight you are going to explain to that guy and then what i used to do for him i used to do homeworks for him like when they give us homeworks he did he didn't do any and then now i have to go in like school used to start at around seven i have to go to school at six o'clock then when i go to school i have to do his homework first before anything else he's gonna come around uh, when the, the the class has started but he must find his homework ready because at home i was unable to do two homeworks because my mom was gonna notice because she was all over my books she was searching everything so i used to go early in the morning 6 a.m do the homework for the bully and when he comes well I, I give him his homework so he used to pass because of me you know during that time he used to pass because of me so life went on life went on so problems started towards the end of the year towards the end of the year that's when problem started now this guy uh because at the end of the day yeah we used to write sort of exams nyana in a way like final exams in a way you know uh so before the exams like towards the end of the year this guy was actually i think he was about three to four years older than me meaning that i actually think that he was already sexually active to put it correct he was three to four years older than me but in grade eight same same grade as me i don't know what was happening but i'm not gonna judge him because i've stayed in varsity for almost more than four years as well you know so now this guy uh, he started making me feel uncomfortable like for example remember he's a bully he's the boss of the class 
probably the boss of all grade eight you can't do you can't tell him anything he was already smoking at that time he was smoking a uh, cigarette he was smoking weed whatever that needs to be smoking he was smoking so he sometimes in class when we we're sitting in class he would put in he would put his leg on my on my legs like his big leg he would put it on my tiny legs and i would keep quiet because i can't do anything about it you know and then sometimes he would brush my thighs in class remember the tables were those ones which are hidden you can't really see what's happening behind and then it started making me feel uncomfortable in a way because at that time i was not sexually active i would say i was not into dating like i didn't even understand what was going on i think so he was brushing me initially basically i would say it's sexual abuse <laughs> coming to think of it now you see all these people who abused me i think i must go for them one by one i remember all their names actually i i will i must go for them one by one so yeah so he used to brush me you know and i would feel uncomfortable you know and then sometimes after school he would ask me not to leave you know and then when i don't leave i would do assignments for him and then sometimes he would like randomly kiss me on on the thing here don't get me wrong uh, he never kissed me on the lips and i never kissed him you know but those were the things which made me hate grade eight like i wanted the year to get done because i feel like you know what this is not okay but that was actually sexual abuse but don't get me wrong i was never raped i was just touched where i was uncomfortable you know and yeah so uh, it happened now towards the year end vele exams were about to start now with exams here's what the principal did when it was time for exams um the principal actually mixed us he thought he was gonna stay with us with me so that i can show so that he can copy my answers but the exams the the principal mixed us vele so almost all the exams he was staying far away from me i was happy so i wrote my exam successfully and then i passed and then he failed now the last time i saw him was when we were fetching the report in december and he told me that since i've passed and he failed he's going to find me so i was actually scared at the same time what is he gonna do to me because now he's blaming me that he failed he's actually blaming me that he failed you know and <laughs> it's not my fault that the guy failed honestly speaking it's not my fault like there, there's there's nothing that i was gonna do to help him you know um let me just charge my phone quickly apologies uh, let me just charge my phone here yo guys i can't really show but i can't find the hole like i'm trying to charge the phone here but i can't find the hole okay yeah i found the hole i found the hole now so yeah now luckily uh there were so many cases which were reported uh which were reported against him so i think they actually dismissed him at the school so meaning that when i was going to grade nine he was no longer there so that was the last time i saw that guy even today i still i st I haven't seen him even today but i'm sure he's probably in my dms right now if i find him utlonyela no agum chave now i'm not scared of him if i find him utlonyama sepa it's fine now